Welcome back to Tech Cloud Solutions. This is part 19 of our Azure Fundamentals, that is AZ900 certification preparation. You can watch our entire course and get certified in first attempt. Link is in the description. Question 96, a company wants to build a new voting kiosk for sales to governments around the world. Which IoT technologies should the company choose to ensure the highest degree of security? The options are A, IoT Hub, B, IoT Central, C, Azure Cognitive Services, D, Azure Sphere. This question tests which Azure IoT technology provides the highest level of end-to-end -end security, especially for critical devices like voting kiosks that handle sensitive government data. The key phrase is highest degree of security. You need hardware level protection, not just cloud connectivity. The correct answer is Azure Sphere. Azure Sphere is a comprehensive end-to-end -end IoT security solution that combines three components. Azure Sphere certified microcontroller units, MCUs, with hardware root of trust, a custom Linux-based OS with defense in-depth architecture, and the Azure Sphere security service that provides continuous renewable security updates and threat detection. It implements seven security properties, including hardware root of trust, certificate-based authentication, small trusted computing base, dynamic compartments, and automated failure reporting, making it ideal for high security applications like voting kiosks, where compromise could have serious consequences. Azure Sphere provides security from the silicon level to the cloud, protecting devices against evolving threats through over-the-air updates. Why the other options are wrong. Option A, IoT Hub is a cloud messaging hub for device connectivity and management, but doesn't provide hardware level security or secured MCUs. Option B, IoT Central is a SaaS platform for building IoT solutions quickly, but focuses on ease of deployment rather than maximum security features. Option C, Azure Cognitive Services provides AI capabilities like vision and speech recognition, not IoT device security. Quick memory tip. Remember, Sphere equals Security Sphere, wraps hardware plus OS plus cloud security around IoT devices. Highest security need, Azure Sphere with hardware root of trust. Question 97. Which of the following is part of the Azure Artificial Intelligence Service? Select the correct option. The options are A, Azure HD Insight, B, Azure Machine Learning Service, C, Azure Logic Apps, D, Azure Dev Test Labs. This question asks you to identify which Azure service is specifically part of Microsoft's AI and machine learning portfolio. Think about which service is designed for building, training, deploying, and managing machine learning models. The correct answer is Azure Machine Learning Service. Azure Machine Learning Service is Microsoft's cloud-based platform specifically designed for building, training, deploying, and managing machine learning models at scale. It provides comprehensive AI and ML capabilities, including automated machine learning, AutoML, model training with support for frameworks like TensorFlow and PyTorch, model deployment as web services or containers, responsible AI tools for fairness and interpretability, and MLOps for production-grade model management. As a core component of Azure's AI portfolio, it enables data scientists and developers to create intelligent applications using both custom models and pre-built AI capabilities. Why the other options are wrong. Option A, Azure HD Insight is a big data analytics service for processing large data sets using frameworks like Hadoop and Spark, not specifically an AI ML service. Option C, Azure Logic Apps is a workflow automation service for integrating apps and data across systems, not for machine learning model development. Option D, Azure Dev Test Labs is a development and testing environment service for quickly creating VMs and resources, not related to AI or machine learning. Quick memory tip, remember, Azure ML equals AI service, HD Insight equals big data, Logic Apps equals workflows. Machine learning in the name's AI service. If this video is helping you, support us by hitting the like button, and don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. Question 98, exam notes. Each correct answer presents a complete solution. Each correct selection is worth one point. Which of the following are the most common uses of hybrid clouds? Select two correct options. The options are A, government agencies, B, cloud migration, C, high availability, D, virtualization. This question asks you to identify the two most common use cases for hybrid cloud deployments. Think about what hybrid clouds enable, combining on-premises infrastructure with public cloud for specific business benefits. The correct answer is cloud migration, high availability, 
cloud migration is a primary hybrid cloud use case because organizations can gradually transition workloads from on-premises to public cloud while maintaining existing infrastructure, reducing risk and allowing phased modernization without disrupting operations. High availability, often implemented through disaster recovery, is one of the most common hybrid cloud uses. Organizations maintain critical systems in private clouds while using public cloud as backup infrastructure, enabling quick failover during disasters and ensuring business continuity. Hybrid clouds support both scenarios by providing the flexibility to distribute workloads strategically across environments while maintaining control over sensitive data and ensuring resilience. Why the other options are wrong. Option A, government agencies, is a type of organization that uses hybrid clouds, not a use case or reason why hybrid clouds are deployed. Option D, virtualization, is a technology that enables cloud computing but isn't a specific hybrid cloud use case. Virtualization exists in private, public, and hybrid clouds alike. Quick memory tip. Remember, hybrid bridge plus backup. Migration bridges old to new. HADR backs up for continuity. Common hybrid use cases, migration, DRHA, cloud bursting, data compliance. Question 99. You have an on-premises network that contains several servers. You plan to migrate all the servers to Azure and need to recommend a solution to ensure that some of the servers are available if a single Azure data center goes offline. What should you include in the recommendation? The options are A, scalability, B, fault tolerance, C, elasticity, D, low latency. This question tests which Azure resilience concept ensures servers remain available even when a single data center fails. The key requirement is available if a single Azure data center goes offline. You need redundancy across multiple locations. The correct answer is fault tolerance. Fault tolerance is the ability of a system to remain operational even when one or more components fail, which in Azure means deploying resources across multiple fault domains availability zones, or regions to survive data center failures. For migrated servers, you should deploy VMs in availability sets distributed across fault domains within a data center, or availability zones, separate physical data centers within a region, to ensure that if one Azure data center goes offline, your servers in other zones continue running without interruption. This requires architectural planning with redundancy built in such as load-balanced web servers across zones or database replication across regions, ensuring business continuity during infrastructure failures. Why the other options are wrong. Option A, scalability, is the ability to increase or decrease resources based on demand, but doesn't address availability during data center failures. Option C, elasticity, is automatic scaling based on workload changes, not protection against infrastructure failures or outages. Option D, Low latency refers to fast response times and network speed, but doesn't ensure availability when a data center goes offline. Quick memory tip. Remember, fault tolerance equals failure protection. Multiple zones regions keep systems running when one fails. Data center failure equals use availability zones or regions for fault tolerance. Question 100. Which of the following gives all Azure customers a chance to test the beta and other pre-release features? Select the correct option. The options are, a, general availability, GA, B, private preview, C, public preview, D, general preview. This question asks which Azure service lifecycle stage allows all Azure customers to access and test new beta features before they become production ready. The key phrase is all Azure customers, not a limited group, but open to everyone with an Azure subscription. The correct answer is public preview. Public preview is the Azure service lifecycle stage where new features or services are made available to all Azure customers with an active subscription for testing and experimentation before general availability. During public preview, customers can evaluate new capabilities, provide feedback to Microsoft, and test integration with their existing systems. Though these features typically don't include formal SLAs or full support and may have regional limitations. Public preview serves as the beta testing phase where Microsoft gathers real-world feedback from the broader customer base to refine features before production release. Why the other options are wrong. Option A, general availability GA, is the production-ready stage with full SLA coverage and support, not for testing beta features. It's the final release stage. 
Option B, private preview, is limited to a select group of invited customers, Microsoft employees, and MVPs under NDA, not available to all Azure customers. Option D, general preview, is not a valid Azure lifecycle term. Microsoft uses public preview and private preview, not general preview. Quick memory tip, remember, public equals everyone can test, private equals invitation only. Public preview equals beta testing for all Azure customers. To get the free PDF or mock test, comment PDF or mock or both, I will share the downloadable link within next 24 hours.